the um, Schripper Farben pencils. Um, I pressed the stop button then instead of the zoom, so I might have sounded a bit weird. <laughs> so we have this length. Now, what I've been doing in the other ones was doing, usually doing a bit of a colour and then background after, so I'll probably do the same thing. I have got no idea what pencils to use colour wise because I'm not sure if there's some that I didn't use last time. I'm sure there probably is. But it was a while ago, so I'm just going to get started. And I'm really tempted to do these in blue, but we've got lovely blue ones there. So I think I'll start with some pinks instead. Um, let's start with a carnation. I'll just see if I can find it. I think it's this one. Um, no, that's... Uh, bear with me. It's... It's getting to know, because they're new pencils, I don't really know them that well, and they're also quite far away, um, which makes it a bit tricky. So here is our carnation pencil, and we're going to do these larger blooms. What I'm going to try and do is put some more layers of colour at the top here, on this petal, and then do less towards the tip here. Just trying to put my hand somewhere <coughs> comfortable. Sorry, I'm a bit hoarse. It's very early this morning. It's only quarter past eight. I've uh, I'm going out to an art exhibition with my husband um, a bit later on. Um, it's quite an odd exhibition. I don't really know what to expect. There's a artist in our town who does mosaic art from old tiles and it's lovely but this exhibition is partly her work which will be interesting to see but also combined with something else and I can't even remember what it was when I looked at it and thought I'd like to go there but it's the last um, weekend of the exhibition um, so we're gonna pop over and have a little look Okay, there's that one. We'll just move to the next one. There are a few slightly different flowers in this. Like there are these berries too, all circles, buds, whatever they are. We're going to do the more slightly different shades of colour, I think, just to keep it fun and interesting. <clears throat> but I'm just going to do these larger ones first. So we'll go along to that. I'll tell you about it in. It probably won't be the next video, but in the next the video I record after <laughs> I've been because. <laughs> uh, probably do a couple this morning before we go so uh, that's that so uh, yeah, looking forward to that should be nice should be good fun a bit different you know trying to get him to sort of do some things on his days off because what he said was to me a while ago is that he doesn't like the idea of retiring completely because he thinks he won't have any purpose and he won't have things to do and stuff like that. And although he's got art as his hobby, um, he hasn't done it for a while. Um, I think partly because of his ADHD, he gets bored quickly in some in some ways. So I want to try and encourage him to do a bit more, get out of the house, make the use of his time. Now these bud, these ones are the same flower, but they're a little bit smaller. I'm going to do them very slightly differently. So I'm going to come down and do these two. And go back and do those little ones. I'll talk. I'll tell you in a minute. Um, so um, I want to try and get him doing different things so that, firstly, his weekend doesn't pass in a blur, which they so often do, um, where it he just seems to have spent all weekend sitting in front of a computer or television, you know. And uh, I find that if we, the more things we do the slower time seems to go and things like that which I think is always good um, and this one but um, just trying to get him thinking about doing a few different things so we'll see what happens I would quite like to take my son with me but neither of them are interested one's going to be doing some revision he's got his driving theory test coming up um, next week so he's getting his head down into that um, which is good, obviously. Um, what I want to do now 
is to grab a slightly darker pink. I'm just having a look at my... Oh, that's quite a lot darker, but I think that's... Um, yeah. I'm going to go for the rose, if I can find it. Might be that one. Yeah. Now, this is quite a lot darker. And I'm going to do these smaller ones. My husband's coming. I can hear his tablet playing something very loudly. And I'm going to do these smaller ones slightly darker. They're still the same sort of um, tone of pink, sort of heading more towards red. But I think maybe because they're a little bit smaller, they might be a bit darker. Just in my sort of experience, when you're looking at flowers and you've got a smaller flower, um, you know, a newer, like a bud that's nearer to a bud, which is what I'm thinking this could be. Um, it's just a little bit darker, but I am going to use this slightly darker one to just put a few, um, a few marks on here, just where I think the shadow should be, like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. It just, um, you can see the difference. It's just a few strokes of colour, and I think it makes quite a significant difference. Just a little bit here and there just where there might be a bit of shadow and it sort of defines the different sections of the flower a little bit more whereas these two will be completely this colour now we also have these can you see those? yeah I don't know what to do with those they're very old aren't they? we'll get there I'll come up with something it's a little bit easier to fade the colour when you've got a darker colour I find that anyway do too. There we go. And then the next one. Yeah, I usually starting to also encourage him to write a to-do list for the weekend so he gets lots done. I don't tend to do that because I tend to not do, I tend to just do more over the weekend than I do in the week because I usually try and record a couple of videos a day. Um, every day because that's what I release so it just keeps me on top of what I'm doing sometimes I can do more sometimes I can't you know and uh, then so I do those and I edit them and that sort of thing so I'm doing that every day weekday or weekend day and uh, I like it it keeps me in a sort of routine and you know I enjoy the recording side the editing making thumbnails and that isn't so much fun but it's all part of it and you can't have a job without there being less fun parts. And I keep trying to tell my son that, um, remind Pitt and my husband, you know, you can't always be, and the better bits feel better if you've done bits that aren't quite so fun, I think. Um, now this one down here is very much darker than these two. So I'm just going to put down a few more layers here, make it a bit darker. Because I wanted them to look different. So, uh, yeah, that's better. And then I'm going to do these little ones. These look like little tulips, but they're obviously on the same plant. I'm going to go even darker. Um, what's this colour? Yeah, the fuchsia pink. Mm, it doesn't look significantly darker. I am going to go for the Rose Luster, I think, if I can find it. Is that it? No, that's the plum. It must be this. Hmm, it's a little bit more purpley. Maybe that's not what I want. Um, maybe I do want the plum. Be more reddish. I think, yeah, I'm going to go to for There's No Place Like Home. It's it's a more pinky red. I need to sharpen it though because our flowers are quite little. I'm actually going to start higher up because they go, they go all the way down. I'm going to miss some. Now here I'm going to make them maybe a little bit darker at the base. Lighter towards the tip of the ear. But it's a smaller space so it's a bit harder to fade it because there's less room. And I've got a very sharp pencil to fit in the corners, but that makes it harder to fade. But I think it's all working. <clears throat> I'm happy. 
with how it's all coming out anyway. So that looks good. And I've got to obviously think about some green as well, but we'll get there later. I forget how nice these pencils are. They aren't the cheapest um, of pencils, but they aren't the most expensive. So um, they're rather nice. So they're sort of soft and smooth. They're not smushy. They just more like a soft chalk feel, I think. Now we've got these little circles. Um, I'm going to go for a plum, I think. It's very deep pink, isn't it? Get it really dark. Do you need to sharpen though? Need it sharp, they're very small. And then down a bit. Now normally with a sort of berry shape I would try and make it a little bit darker on the edge than in the middle. But I am, but they're small. Now I'm beginning to think about greens while I'm doing this. Now green wise what do we want? Well, we want something that goes with pink, obviously, so certainly not olives, um, probably more like a, a mid-green, leaf-green, grass-green, that sort of thing if you were doing your polychromos, I don't know what those colours are called in this set, so let's have a little look. So these sorts of colours, the avocado, the apple, the golf course, those sorts of mid curls, the of course is slightly olivey. I would probably use um let's put it against there so you can see what we're looking at. I think the avocado is very good, but I want a darker one to sort of do a contrast. I think I'm gonna go actually emerald avocado. Avocado. I'm gonna do. So let me find them. There's the avocado. There's the emerald. Okay. So let's sharpen our emerald up. And we're gonna do all the stems first. There we go. A little bit sharper. So here it is, emerald. And I'm actually gonna do this top of this flower. A little bit each side, fade towards the middle, like that. I will go back over that with, an, with my lighter colour after and start working my way around this stem. I want this to be quite um, uh, intense. Um, layer it up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you could leave the ends of these bits a bit lighter, which I'm going to do on the larger ones. So then I can come back with my lighter colour. Like here, this well. And here. Sorry. I'm just gently working through. nice to be finishing this double page. I feel like I don't really like leaving things half done, if you know what I mean. I mean, I know I'd done all the other page, but just I had other things to do and share with you. And then I sort of had got other ideas and this one kept getting pushed to the side. Also, um, I had to catch up a bit because I got a bit behind. And because this is a little series, I wanted to try to do it in advance so that I could get the um, my members their compilation video done. So uh, before the whole series went up, so that sometimes can hold me up a little bit with starting it. 
because knowing that I've got enough time to do it, record it all and everything to get that done. Sometimes I don't quite make it. I didn't with um, this one I did recently where I, oh, the Ivy um, Dragon Treasure one. I, uh, oops, just going to do a bit of there too. <coughs> I didn't manage to get it all the second page recorded before all the first page recorded before it started going out so the compilation was a bit late I don't like doing that to you members I know you don't put pressure on me to do that and to get things done quickly but I feel like it I owe it to you because you pay your membership to uh, get get your series in advance so uh, there we go Just working my way down and realise you can't see what I'm doing. I am so sorry. This is the problem when I zoom in close and I've got a thing that I have to keep moving. I get a bit forgetful, especially when I start waffling on. <laughs> Someone said to me they don't know how I just sit and talk to myself. Well, maybe some of us, maybe not me, maybe me, talk to ourselves anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I fight fit well. When you live in a house with people that are always on their devices, distracted, listening to videos all the time, or watching videos, or involved, or get deeply engrossed in things, you often talk and nobody listens because, and you don't realise no one's listening, and then and you just think, oh, I'll just carry on talking and get it out of my system, even though no one's listening to me. So maybe that's got something to do with it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure anyone that's got teenagers knows that. But also um, my husband's the same. He always, always has to have something on playing. And uh, this is an odd design, isn't it? It sort of goes into here. <clears throat> um, yeah, we'll do these and just sort of fade them up. Yeah, it's it's quite difficult sometimes. That's why it's quite nice going out because then they don't tend to be on their devices. You know, you can actually talk to them. But uh, they don't always want to come. You can't force them. There we go. So now we're going to use our avocado pencil. I was going to say our avocado. I wouldn't recommend drawing with avocado. It's too delicious. Eat it. Use a pencil. <laughs> so this, I feel, is going to be a different tone of colour. So I'm going to have to go over everything to match it in like that. And you can see it sort of fades from here to here, where we it still shows the colour that's underneath through. But I need to put this slightly more yellowy colour on top so that it... So if I just do that, this doesn't look right to me, this colour. It also helps it to blend if you've got a bit of the other colour lying on top. <clears throat> it doesn't mean we'll have to go over all of it, including the stem, but I don't mind. It also means that all the little bits that I've missed, that, um, that I haven't noticed, because you can see better than me, I might manage to colour. Probably not, but you know. Do you think I'm looking at it with my naked eye while I've got my specs on with my quite not very good bifocals on um, trying to figure out what I'm doing while I'm talking and you might have this zoomed up on a huge TV screen looking at every minuscule pixel <laughs> so please don't be too judgmental <laughs> but I also want you to feel that you can be free with your colouring you don't have to get it exactly in the lines you know you may need to use a magnifying glass for certain details um i sometimes have had to myself um but i don't want to be too finicky and precise because it for me it just gets too um i just know um it's too difficult you know i don't want to be um having to hold a magnifying glass in one hand and or really f worry about getting every single detail correct so uh, I want to take it my stride a little bit more 
so that's what I do. More of a relaxed attitude, you know, it's, it's not about perfection, it's about fun. A little bit of learning. But enjoyment more than anything else, I hope. The sun is shining. It's early, so it's not come across the desk yet. It's on the other side of my desk. It's going to take a while to come across. Might be racing it later, uh, like I do some mornings. But I probably I won't worry too much because I'll just shut the blind. There we go. Okay, now we need to think about our background. I've gone out of the line down here quite a bit. I'm just going to try and erase that a little bit. I'm not going to be too fussy, but it's just caught my eye. I don't know if it'll come off anyway. Now what colour for a background? Well, I'm going to do some blue. I'm actually going to come right out to do the background because I think it'll be easier for me. Um... Now I'm thinking, this angle of my camera looks very strange. It looks like this bit of my book is much wider than that bit. I don't know why it looks like that. I've been fiddling with my tripod, trying to stop it doing that, and it looks worse. Hmm. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that now. I can't do anything about it. Um, background blue. Let's have a look. Here's our swatch chart. I don't want to go too dark. I'm thinking maybe this French blue. The sort of purpley blue will it go with those i think it will let's use that french blue where are you that, are you that blue yeah so here it is a french blue and i'm just going to do a layer all over the background um just a sort of lightish layer we use this i think for the sky in the uh, on the tulip design, which was the same sort of colours as this. Now I'm going to try to make this quite neat. I mean, I say quite neat, I mean by my very low standards of neat, so that I don't have to go over the top of all of it again. I will go over some of it where I layer up. This bit in the middle, I probably won't touch again unless it looks messy so I'm just going to try and spend a little bit of effort and time just trying to get it looking okay the first time I'm trying to work out what's going on in the house my husband is um, emptying the dishwasher because I said I didn't, I've been doing it every morning. And I said, I'm leaving it for someone else to do. He said, I'll do it. Okay. So he's doing that. And uh, I don't know what, one of my sons is still in bed. I don't know what the other one's doing. He could be helping his dad, but I don't think he is. Maybe his dad didn't think it was fair for one to do it and not the other. And it is a bit unfair if you're up first, you have to do all the chores, but that's normally what I have to do. <laughs> but you see, when he's going to work, I get up early and I um, make his lunch, get everyone's breakfast things out, make a drink, empty the dishwasher so that everything is ready for him to come down and make his breakfast and then finish his lunch off. Because I make him a salad, but he likes the dressing. I let him make his dressing. He won't sort of cut vegetables and things, he can't be bothered. So uh, I do that bit. But he won't eat them without a dressing on, so he has to do that. So. He says they're too bitter. But interestingly, he and one of my sons has got this thing where they find things quite bitter. I know I'm going all over the place. I'm just trying to tidy up a little bit, make it look reasonably even if I can. Um, yeah, my one son has, has got no problem with bitter. He can eat burnt toast and things like that and he finds that absolutely fine. But he cannot abide things that he say, says taste earthy. 
so like beetroot um, has that sort of earthy taste but also he says tomatoes taste like it and I'm confused by that <laughs> I've never tasted an earthy tomato and um, but he can eat spinach which also sometimes has that sort of excuse me but we tend to either eat raw baby spinach which doesn't have so much of a strong taste or we cook a little bit within a dish so you can't really taste it so uh, you know it does uh, it, it very much depends on uh, how much and what it's in he can eat tomato sauce is fine but of course once tomato is cooked it's got quite a bit of a different taste. I've just got to wipe my nose. So um, yeah, it's uh, it. It's interesting. Whereas I don't, I can cope with bitter, and it's sweet that I struggle with. I think because um, I'm not used to it. So although I love things like sweet potatoes and bananas and grapes, they are incredibly sweet. So. I guess I probably can, but I think if I was given something like a caramel bar or something, I might struggle with it, or particularly uh, something with artificial sweetener in, because they are even they seem to be even sweeter. I was um, reading something about sugar the other day. Um, well, it was actually about chocolate. It was quite interesting, saying that Lindt, who probably you've heard of, make chocolate, Swiss chocolate. Um, they're trying to use the whole of the chocolate bean, um, chocolate fruit, because chocolate um, beans are the centre of a fruit. And what they tend to do is remove the beans slash seeds um, and dry them and use them for chocolate. But the, um, the flesh of the fruit, they tend to just leave to rot on the field. Now, although that would fertilise the ground, it's obviously a bit wasteful. Right now I'm going to do a harder layer in the corners or a darker layer in the corners and edges. Um, so they're talking about utilising it. Now they're saying well we can use it instead of sugar, the um, fruit, because it's sweet and so it'll be really good. And I was thinking that's okay but you know fruit sugar is still not brilliant for us. The fructose is actually very bad when it's extracted from fruit. Um, if you eat like a banana, it's not so bad. There's still quite a lot of sweet in them. We have to remember that animals get diabetes, like zoo animals, lemurs and things. They used to feed them fruit. And because fruit varieties are a lot sweeter um, that we eat compared to what they might have in the wild or, you know, they might not normally eat just fruit. They might have tumors vegetables uh, tubers tumors yeah. vegetables and things like that because the fruit is sweet it gives them diabetes so i in one of the um, wildlife parks i went to recently ish they had started giving their lemurs vegetables instead of fruit to eat they slightly boiled things like carrots and parsnips and things they're still quite sweet vegetables you know the root vegetables but um a bit healthier for them than just fruit which was very interesting so anyway um if they use the fruit um the flesh although it's less wasteful we do have to be careful because as i say fructose is actually less healthy for us than sucrose <laughs> which which is table, table sugar because of the way, it's because of the way the body processes them differently um apparently fructose is processed by the liver so it go it bypasses your sort of um doesn't raise your blood sugar so it seems good for diabetes diabetics in that sense however it's processed by the liver which means that um i'm just tidying this up now um and it the liver turns it to fat and now sugars always get turned to fat and there's not that's not necessarily a bad thing but when it's done in the liver the fat stays around the area of the liver so you start to get fatty liver just from eating fruit juice and glucose fructose syrup and things like that. And uh, so if they use the um, sweeteners, the natural sugar from the chocolate actually might make it less healthy, which is, uh, which is quite interesting. But also the problem 
is also cost. This was what shocked me more than anything, was they said that the sugar industry is hugely subsidised. And so that's what keeps the price of chocolate low, because they put a lot of sugar in it and less cocoa or chocolate in it. And therefore, as well as it's also one, um, they tend to take out the cocoa butter and sell it for um, makeup and where they can get more money for it and put dairy or palm oil in instead, which also um, keeps the price of chocolate down. So when you, that's why 100% chocolate, which is what I eat, is so much more expensive than a regular bar of chocolate with full of sugar and dairy, which is quite interesting. But the subsidised of the sugar industry, that was what shocked me. And I looked into it, and I don't know if it's true of all countries. I could only find stuff with reference to America. And yeah, America's sugar industry is subsidised apparently to help out the farmers and things like that. Now, as much as I um, um, feel that a lot of farmers do a lot of good, um, you know, obviously we all need to eat, etc. Um, I do feel that encourage them to grow healthier foods. You know, let's have more um, sweet potatoes and pumpkins and apples and <laughs> potatoes and, you know, all those things, rather than sugar. So we've got a big sugar industry in the UK as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not good. But I've been fiddling and faddling, and I have now finished that. So I hope that that was okay. I did waffle on a bit. I'm going to try and figure out what's going on with this camera. I think I might know, but I might not know. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a really super day and happy colouring.